and this whole floor, this whole floor slopes down that way about five eighths of an inch or more, three quarters of an inch. And so my thought here is before they had the water kind of flowing out that way, I, I lifted it up, but I still had to make sure that I had enough height uh, for my tile to fit underneath here. And I do now that I lifted that up, but I had to lower, I had to lower this corner. I, I don't know if you saw that video or not. Well, I went through a whole thought process before I installed this floor because I wanted everything to flow right. The water, water's gonna flow at an angle down, at an angle down this way. And so when I get to this point, if you can visualize the water coming down here, the water's gonna, the water's gonna come down at, at about this point. And if I float, if I can float this, I have to screw this down. And if I float this from this point on down, then I'm gonna have to go from here to where my low spot is over here, okay? So when the water comes down, it's gonna hit a, right in here. And I'm going to encourage the water to flow this way before it flows out. I don't want it to get close to the column and that's going to work out good because then I could have then I raise this edge and this slopes downhill so when the water comes from here it's going to go this way and then it's going to trickle on down this way before it goes out and that's how that's going to work and how am I going to do that I'm going to use my Durham's rock hard water putty for that I could have got some other stuff at the store. They had they had some some other stuff, kind of like fix all, but it wasn't fix all. It was something else, and it came 25 pounds bag. And I could have, I guess I could have used that, but I'm gonna ultimately I want to use my Durham's rock hard water putty for these stairs too. And I'm gonna end up. Going down here, anywhere where there's a hairline crack, this is even in the new wood. And I'm gonna probably coat this. This was a two by six and it happened to be rough, kind of on both sides of the wood. I'm gonna smooth that over before I paint it. And I come over here, I'm gonna smooth this one out before I paint it. There's a couple marks. And then in the existing stairs, these, this was actually like a glue lamb beam or something. These were two by fours. Boom, 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 boom. And it mimicked a four by 12. I don't know why they used that out here. They should have used just regular four by 12 material, but they didn't. Let's see, you can see where the check marks are. That's the two by four, two by four, two by four, two by four. So anywhere after I scrape this, this loose paint off, anywhere where it's low, where there's a crack. I'll probably skin every single one of these. You can, you can see where the, where I'm gonna have to do the work, right? Let me look down, look down here. See that? And I'm gonna use that rock hard wood putty there. Before I, then I'll prime these stairs and then I'll, I'll caulk them in and then I'm even thinking about putting a coat of this elastomeric roof coating right over the stairs. Yes. Putting that on, on each one of these after the primer, let's say. And I'll see how that works. Maybe put a couple coats of that on before I repaint the stairs this color. I, I'm hoping I can re repaint right over that roof coating. I'm thinking about doing all that to those stairs. That way I can get them nice and water resistant uh, so that they'll be working for years to come. I don't want these to leak. I don't want them to crack. I don't want them to get dry rot in there. Every time you get a crack, you get water in there, you get, you get dry rot starting to happen. Okay. And speaking of primer, once I put the water putty in all the cracks and, and the areas where I want to float and everything, 
that's going to take me a while to just do that. But once I get all that done, then what I what I'm thinking of doing is even using the primer that uh, that mold killer primer that I used. I don't have a can of it out here right now, but I'm thinking about going ahead and priming this, putting two coats of primer on here before before I put my elastomeric roof coating on. Before I put this roof coating on, I'm going to go ahead and paint this with that primer. And that's going to help stick to this. It's going to fill up any voids. And I decided to put the rough side of this, of this uh, flooring facing up. And usually that's what they do anyways on flooring because you can see the black lines here. These black lines don't necessarily have to be where your floor joists are. They just help you line up like if your floor joist, let's say your floor joist is right here and you nail it at, at both ends, then you can say, okay, it's about five inches off of here. I can eyeball that. Tap, 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 tap. And you know exactly where that is. That kind of helps you with that. I thought that was kind of a good idea that they put those black lines on there for that. And I'm going to put the primer on there. That's going to help bond right down to here because you can see little hairline ridges on here. That's going to help uh, the primer stick to that. That's also going to help the roof coating stick to that. Now this roof coating should stick to just about anything because it's, it's designed to be put on really super old roofing that maybe you thought, ah, I think I should maybe uh, have to tear all that off and put a new roof. Well, this, this is like, hey, you don't have to do that. Just put this stuff on and go right over your existing roof. That's what this stuff is designed to do. Okay, and like I say, they have, they have different numbers. This happens, this happens to be, uh, let's see what the number is. Five, this is called 587. Okay, see that? That 587 is a certain number for this Durabrite elastomeric roof coating. Elastomeric means that it'll stretch. Once you put it on there, if your wood is floating around a little bit, this stuff stretches to a certain extent before it'll crack. So it's like putting a rubbery surface on here. And I'm gonna end up putting, because it's such a small area, I'm gonna put it on with a paint roller and I may put, I may not be able to get it as thick as getting one of those big, thick brushes, but those big, thick uh, rollers, but I only need to do this, this amount. So I'll probably end up putting three coats or so as thick as I can on there with my little mini roller and, and put it on as thick as I can and then just put a few different coats on there until I think it's, it's good enough, and I think I can do that with this. And like I say, one gallon is probably probably not going to be enough. I don't know; it might be. It might, it might be enough for three or four coats on here. We'll see. But anyway, that's that's how I'm planning on filling up this entire surface and making this almost like a roof before I put the tile down. Before I relay the floor tile, then I got to put this stuff back, and I saved it from before. There's a little uh, nylonish webbing cloth over the top of these little dimples, and these are just plastic. This is just plastic. I could I could probably break one if I wanted. I'm squeezing it right now. It's dimpled from the back side. It's just got plastic over it. See, plastic that plastic sheeting. See, it's just plastic. And they ended up just, I don't even know where you get that stuff, so I was lucky enough to save most of it that came, that, that I pulled off. And I'm just gonna reuse the stuff that I had. And I guess that's, that's like a cushion to take up any imperfections because you, the flooring's not perfect. See, see like this tile, is lower than that one. This one's up a little bit higher. I don't know why, but maybe uh, the floor, you know, this stuff got pushed down in one area and not another. But anyways, they've got that throughout this whole floor. And oh, here's the other trick I was gonna do. After I put the, after I put the, uh, 
the elastomeric roof coating on three or four coats of that I'm gonna end up running it about to here so I'll, I'll pull this back and do that then an unorthodox way but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it anyways at the store they had some Vitek uh, rolled uh, material that you put on houses it's called Vitek and it's to weatherize your house before you put stucco on before you put siding on and it comes nine foot wide 150 foot long roll and years ago they didn't have that when I was putting uh, siding on houses and stuff we had to use craft paper building paper it was only three foot wide it's paper you put it on there and then you staple it then you put the next one on over that overlap it two or three three or four inches then staple it or or black tar paper they didn't have this we didn't have the luxury of nine foot wide uh, sheeting stuff like this Tyvek to put on nowadays they have it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it I'm gonna put it underneath this over my roofing uh, coating my roof coating and I'm gonna roll it out here and I'm just gonna put it on as a membrane because they have a plastic they have plastic underneath this see this I mean it's I don't know why they had had that maybe it was like well if if water comes through here it gets on the back if it gets on the back side you've got you've got a secondary uh, plastic to, to to direct the water out this way well I'm gonna use that Vitek paper that Vitek uh, plastic stuff you can't you can't rip that stuff and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna attach it uh, it's just gonna be like another d water deterrent if the water gets underneath that chances are the water won't get under that but if the water ever did get under that if it got a hairline crack on it or a rip on it or, or just a little dimple nail or something um, if the water got underneath that then it's just gonna go on my roof coating anyways and the roof coating is going to take the water out okay that's going to be like my secondary thing and when I when I put that on I'm actually gonna cut it and I'm gonna roll that up too or I'm gonna cut it flat and then I'm gonna uh, roll up some of that webbing stuff right here I'll use this over the top of that and fold it and run this up the up the the side of the wall up underneath the stucco trim up here and I'm actually gonna gonna seal that right in around here other than out in the front because I want all the water directed out towards the front so where I cut it on the side I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it up the side I'm gonna cut it here and wrap that webbing stuff up around there I'm gonna I'm gonna tie the whole sucker in other than out front and that's going to be another water deterrent because this floor this floor must slope uh, it's probably three quarters of an inch or more uh, in, in about six feet I put the I put my level on here I've got to lift this side up about uh, three sixteenths three sixteenths or so and that's in two feet let's 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 try it right here three sixteenths or so or a quarter in two feet so that's three eighths in four feet and five almost five five eighths to three quarters of an inch in six feet okay so I know there's plenty of slope over here when the water hits which way is water gonna go it's gonna go downhill it's never gonna go back uphill is it so I'm not really concerned about that I'm not concerned about it having a flat spot in here or anything yeah I'm listening to the song don't stop thinking about tomorrow and I won't 
But that's all I got for this time. But I'll be back tomorrow with more videos.